sinusundan. Umuwi ka na nga sa inyo. Sige na. Go home. Go home. Iku, pire lang ka na. Pire. Mire? Mire. Yun na yung mire? Ako si Mong Sai. My name is Mong Sai. Ah, Mong Sai. Salamat ha. Ang bait-bait mo naman. Naalala ko tuloy yung... Punso kong kapatid. I'm just enjoying some boob tube. Boob tube? Oops. Anyways, it's called the flu. Seems like a little bit of predictive programming. Is it? I don't know. Oh, um, it's kind of ironic though. Anyways, Backyard Sky. Got to report some more live flu footage for you guys. We need to figure this out. What I wanted to mention here was the case fatality rate, the uh, CFR, the case fatality rate. And the thing is with this, there's a lag problem. There's a lag problem. So um, this SARS data was compiled when everything was done and dusted and after the epidemic, so we could work out the case fatality rate. Uh, we see that's just a little below 10%. But the problem with coronavirus is we're still in it. So, um, 305 deaths, 346 officially recovered. So there, if we take the deaths to recover, it makes the death rate look catastrophically high. Um, God willing, it's not. Um, but if we look at the total number of cases and the number of deaths so far, we're going to get a much smaller, uh, around about 2% case fatality rate. But the problem is, we don't know yet. It's too early to tell because of this lag effect. So, um, as we mentioned in our graph, many times you recognise this if you watch these videos, um, this red line is the person being sick, sick and most sick, and getting better. The purple line is the antibodies, the body's immune response. Uh, 
the green line is the viral numbers. And yesterday we noted that the viral numbers do tend to stay up for a period of time when the patient's feeling better, which was concerning from yesterday's video. We also noticed there could be sequelae after the person has recovered. Sequelae. Complications arising from the initial condition. And this is what we're not quite sure about at the moment. Can I speak to um, Chen Chu? Okay, I'll wait. Hey, buddy. Hey, what's up? I was wondering if it was okay if I could share your story. Yes, the American people would like to know what's going on over there. So maybe you can help us prepare for here. Yes, I understand, and I'm sorry. I hope you get better. Stay strong. I will inform everyone. Thank you, Chen Chu. This is Backyard Sky. You need to listen to these people. They can help us. I feel bad for them. I wish I can go there and save them. But, um, I can barely afford a bus ticket. This is Backyard Sky. Only在这个城市,我会继续做我的报道,我只说我看见的,我听见的。妈逼,我连死都不怕。我怕你共产党吗? 大家好,我是陈秋实,现在是1月30号中午11点多 昨天29号我去的武汉的第五医院 
，有的是连小区都不让你出。所以，你没有交通工具，你怎么去医院？这是第一点。第二点，如果你到医院，你明知道你就算到了医院，你也住不了院，你也做不了检测，那你还去医院干嘛？昨天我去了第五医院，第五医院还算有秩序。然后有很多人是过来找这个检测盒、检疫盒，要通过这个检测盒检测我鉴定我到底是不是确诊。因为在这排队的，我就我就混在人群当中，我假装是一个，是一个呃患者，跟他们一起排队，跟他聊，你这咳嗽几天了，发烧几天了，你是来确诊的还是来复诊的？那有的病人就是我咳嗽几天了，我发烧几天了，一直不退，吃退烧药不退，我疑似，他说是疑似，疑似这两个字太折磨人了。我的牌子牌子跟你样了，给你是宝钗的牌子。你要自杀装置的显示，你拿到我的脸上。你肺部那个地方不中。我看老这帮子也不中啊！你
sure I'll listen to you. How does this virus work? How does it transmit? Where does it want to go? And let's protect ourselves. I'm Dr. Peter Lin. I'm a family physician in Toronto, Canada. The coronavirus is a family of viruses that can cause as mild things as just a common cold, all the way up to SARS or MERS. These are these bad pneumonias that we're talking about. And basically what these viruses are, they look like a tennis ball with all these spikes sticking out of it. And depending on the type of spike, it allows that virus to attach to certain places. So some viruses, they have the spike that attaches to your nose. So basically you just get a common cold. But the SARS virus and this new virus that we're talking about has the spike that allows it to attach to the cells in your lung. And when it attaches there, it puts in information to make photocopies of itself. So it uses our equipment to make more viruses. I'm declaring a public health emergency of international concern over the global outbreak of novel coronavirus. Most of the coronaviruses live in animals. In this particular case, it was from Wuhan. There was a fish market where they were selling live animals. And the thought is, is that the virus was in a live animal, then it crossed into a human. But then what we found was that people were getting sick in terms of healthcare workers, in terms of family members that were looking after them, which now meant that the virus can pass from human to another human. Just like all viruses, it needs to reach a target, which is your lung and it has to get there with your help. It has no feet and no wings. So therefore it needs us to move it there. So that's why we keep saying, don't hang around sneezy people because you're gonna breathe it in. And don't touch your face because that's how the virus is gonna get in. The masks are helpful, but they're not necessary because they're leaky. The ones that you and I buy basically have pockets here. So therefore the virus can get in. What the masks really do is they stop us from touching our face. If you're sick, we tend to mask you, so therefore you're not spewing out the viruses to other people sitting around you. The true people that have the real masks are the N95. Those are sealed. These are for the doctors that may be caring uh, for the patient. So in the beginning, the coronavirus will cause kind of like flu-like symptoms or a cold. So people just get the stuffy nose, that kind of thing. But you'll understand that as soon as that virus starts manufacturing in your lung cells, they're producing all these copies of the virus, all of a sudden now you kill the lung cells. So now you can't exchange oxygen. And that's why one of the early symptoms is people get very short of breath and they tend to have a difficult time breathing and that's why they end up in hospital. So currently, unfortunately, we don't have a direct treatment for the coronavirus. So we don't have a medication that can kill it off. And so it's really supportive. So in other words, the patient can't breathe, we give them oxygen, help them to breathe. They can't drink, so therefore we give them fluids to support them. Their kidneys begin to shut down, we help them with all those things. So it's a very supportive process. This is a new virus that we've never seen before. So our immune system, our army, are having a hard time figuring out well what to do. So usually what we have to do is we make something called antibodies. So these are things that can grab onto the spikes that we see on the virus and it'll get rid of the virus for you and that will actually bring you back to good health. So therefore the elderly may have a worse outcome. And of course the young children, so the babies, their immune system is not so good either, so they may not make those antibodies as well. So just remember your hands may be with virus. Virus cannot hurt you because it can't get through the skin. But the moment I do this, now I've brought the virus right to where it wants to go. So let's remember not to touch our hands to our face. So let's say you think that you might have been on a plane or you might have bumped into somebody that has it. What should you do? So the first thing is to contact a healthcare worker to tell them that it's intentional to have it. If you're feeling symptoms and you're going to go into a facility, call ahead. Okay. So whether you're calling the paramedics or whether you're calling the hospital or your doctor, just mention that you were on a flight. If you don't have any symptoms, then what we do is a little bit of a self-quarantine. In other words, we can just keep you away from other people. And so you don't go into parties, don't go with your friends, don't go into public transportation. So we can contain it very easily by making sure that you do a self-confinement, so to speak, uh, for the, let's say, 7 to 14 days is the longest incubation time. So after that, if you're feeling well, then you don't have anything. Stay.